G'day! In this lesson, we will build the book list page. It's common to call the HTTP API endpoint Y Ajax from the JavaScript site. We can use the syntax $.ajax or any other tool to call these endpoints. However, ABP Framework offers a better way. ABP Framework dynamically creates JavaScript proxies for all API endpoints. So we can use any endpoint just like calling a JavaScript function. Let's test these JavaScript proxies in the developer console. Let's run the application by pressing Ctrl F5 and open our browser's developer tools using the shortcut, usually F12. We will first try and call getList to get a list of books in JSON result. acme.bookstore.books is the namespace of the book App service converted to camel case. Book is the conventional name for the book app service. ABP framework has removed app service postfix and converted into camel case. Get list is the conventional name for get list async method defined in the CRUD app service base class. ABP framework has removed async postfix and converted it into camel case. Open braces and closed braces are used to send arguments. In this case, we are specifying an empty object to the getListAsync method, which normally expects an object of type page and sorted results request DTO that is used to send paging and sorting options to the server. All properties are optional with default values, so you can send an empty object. The getList function returns a promise. We can pass a callback to the then function to get the result returned from the server. Let's run this command. We can see the book list returned from the server. We can also check the network tab of the developer tools to see the client to server communication. Let's create a new book using the create function acme.bookstore.books.book.create. We will supply the relevant arguments followed by a then to output the ID from the response object returned. See a message in the console which says successfully created the book ID and the GUI of the book which was just created. Let's check the books table in the database to see the new book row. We can also try get, update and delete functions in the same manner. Before we start the UI development, we first want to prepare the localization text. We would normally do this when needed while developing our application. Localization text should be located under the localization slash bookstore folder of the acme.bookstore.domain.shared project. Let's open the en.json. The en stands for the English translations file and paste the content like this. Localization keys are arbitrary. We can set any name we prefer, some conventions for specific Text types must be followed, like add the menu colon prefix for menu items, or we use enum colon enum type colon enum value naming convention to localize enum members. When we do it like this, ABV framework can automatically localize the enums in proper cases. If a text is not defined in the localization file, it falls back to the localization key as per ASP.NET's core standard behavior. ABP's localization system is built on ASP.NET core standard localization system, but extends it in many ways. It's time to create something visible and usable. Instead of classic MVC, we will use Razor Pages UI approach. Let's create a books folder underneath the pages folder of the web project. We add a new Razor page by right clicking the books folder then selecting Add, then Razor Page Menu Item, we name it Index. We will open the index.cshtml file we just created and we will paste in the following code. You will see that we have created a page using the Add Page Directive and we are also using the Add Using to bring in the namespace acme.bookstore.web.pages.books which will contain the code behind and we are specifying the at model which is the index model. We also have a heading called books which is just in plain HTML. 
Let's open the code behind index.cshtml.cs. We can see that the index model class, which is derived from page model, and there is a method called onGet. We will now add the books page to the main menu. Let's open the books to a menu contributor class in the menu folder and add the following code to the end of the configure main menu async method. We can see that we are adding a menu item to the context menu called bookstore. We can see that we're using the L function which localizes the bookstore key. And we're also defining an icon which is a book icon for this menu item. We are then adding another menu item below the bookstore menu item and this time we are specifying the URL which is slash books. Let's run the application and log into the application using the username admin and the password 1q2w3 capital E star. We can see the bookstore menu item. When we click on bookstore, we can see the books menu item. When we click on books, we are redirected to a new empty books page. We will use the datatables.net jQuery library to show the books list. Datatables library completely works via Ajax. It is fast, popular, and provides a good user experience. Data tables library is already configured in the startup project. So all we need to do is directly use it in any page without including any style or script file to our page. Let's open the index.cshtml file and paste in the following code. The abp-script tag helper is used to add external scripts to the page. It has many additional features compared to the standard script tag. It handles minification and versioning. abp-card is a tag helper from Twitter Bootstrap's card component. There are other useful tag helpers provided by the abp framework to easily use most of the Bootstrap components. We could use regular HTML tags instead of these tag helpers but using tag helpers reduces HTML code and prevents errors by helping through IntelliSense and compile time checking. Let's create an index.js file underneath the pages slash books folder and paste the following JavaScript code in the file. abp.localization.getResource gets a function that is used to localize text using the same JSON file defined on the server side. In this way, we can share the localization values with the client side. abp.libs.datatables.normalize configuration is a helper function defined by the ABP framework. There is no requirement to use it, but it simplifies the data tables configuration by providing conventional default values for missing options. abp.libs.datatables.createAjax is another help function to adapt ABP Framework's dynamic JavaScript API proxies to the data table expected parameter format. acme.bookstore.books.book.getList is the dynamic JavaScript proxy function introduced before. The Luxon library is also a standard library that is pre-configured in the solution so we can use it to perform date time operations easily. Finally, let's run the application. We can see the books in a nice data table which has sortable columns. We can sort the columns by ascending or descending order like this. If we had more books, then we could use the pager to navigate to the next set of 10 records. The number of records per page is based on the dropdown which allows us to select how many records should we see per page. In this lesson, we built the book list page. Join me in the next lesson to build create, update and delete functionality.